What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again. And this time we are here with Mike of Seventh Storm. Thank you for being here today. It's great to have you here, man. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's somebody has definitely been keeping busy throughout these pandemic times. We got the debut Seventh Storm album coming out uh, very, very soon, just at the end of the week. Maledict. This. Uh, do you just want to talk about like how the making of this was, being that this was a new project? Was there kind of like a preconceived idea of what you wanted this to sound like, or was there like a lot of uh, experimentation involved and a lot of trial and error? Well, first of all, I had to find a band and somebody that I connected to. So I, I just started by jamming with these uh, friends of mine. That was, uh, it was a good friend that also got me in touch with them. It was all new to me. You can imagine after almost 30 years in the same band playing with uh, other musicians. But that was the exciting part to be able to play with, uh, you know, different talent and, uh, you know, some people that is not so well known outside of Portugal, you know, being a musician in such a big band for so long, you know, I lost a little bit touch of what was going on in Portugal. So to be able to reconnect to that, I think was inspiring to, to start with a new, with a, a new band and a new album. Uh, we just started jamming away and everything was going a little bit in the hard rock direction. And uh, that for me was cool because I, I was brought up in the States uh, and hard rock was a big part of my, my life when I was a, a kid in the 80s. But I didn't want to leave it at that. You know, I wouldn't feel comfortable, I don't think, in my own show, shoes. Um, for so many years playing, you know, different styles of metal, you know, from black metal, death metal, gothic metal, doom metal. So all these little elements, was uh, it wasn't like a, a vision that I had, but it was something that I felt that had to be there. Uh, those elements were, were really important to bring all the pieces together. So everything else was experimentation and uh, really enjoying being together and, and playing, uh, especially like you were saying during the pandemic. Man, it was crazy, like going through restrictions and making sure we were getting the home on time just so we could rehearse and we, we could like start to have an idea of uh, what kind of music we could produce together. So I think that brought like an extra uh, bit of excitement, like we were running around <laughs> And it was a little bit like that. Actually, if you think back, that's what it feels like not having freedom, you know, being all these restrictions. And Portugal was a country that had a dictatorship until the, the, the 70s. So uh, it brings a lot of the, uh, back to those moments. And uh, tr we try to appreciate uh, this freedom that we have to make the music that we want. And uh, looking back in the Portuguese history, uh, especially in those times, there were so many creative artists coming uh, from Portugal, not known internationally, of course, um, I think our Portuguese music, maybe Fado is what's mo most recognized in the world and also some world music. Um, but in the metal genre, you know, we still have to fight a lot to get to get out there. Well, uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, uh, something very important, actually, that I wanted to bring up, because I know that with your work with Moonspell, a lot of elements of Portugal was influential in its concept, like 1755, for example. But, like, it, are you looking, I, I, being the drummer, are you looking at this, are you trying to explore different aspects and different meanings behind a Seventh Storm as opposed to Moonspell? Or are you maybe, like, uh, approaching similar subject matter or going into it with maybe a similar state of mind? Well, when it started, uh, you can imagine that I, I had the same kind of you know, thinking, you know, the, the same kind of process of how to construct the song, how to construct an album, you know, the visuals, the artwork, going on tour. That's something I was so used to doing with so many albums. It, it was like a cycle. Every two years, three years, we were always recording an album, always going on tour. So I started immediately with that kind of uh, work ethic of, of bringing everything together. But of course, this is something new and it's with different musicians. And especially with the vocals, it takes the, the music a different direction than I was used to. So I really had to work around that and try and find what would keep it exciting and uh, extreme. So I didn't want to lose that, that touch. Uh, but also something that's new and brings out the best that Portugal has to offer. I think uh, we have a lot of uh, you know, our history, our way of living, uh, our emotion, you know, coming from the south of Europe. It's a little lost still um, in the world, and I would just like to share that beauty with with everybody, putting it into the music and, and making sure it keeps this melancholic feeling, because that's so connected to the kind of people that we are. And um, do you feel then uh, with the first three singles that you released off of this uh, new album that maybe it's a good representation of what the entirety of it is going to sound like, or is there like a lot more uh, new tricks and a lot more uh, new sounds to be discovered? 
Yeah, there's uh, still a lot to, to be discovered. Uh, it was pretty insane during the, the whole process of creating the music because uh, we couldn't keep the songs short. Everything was like in the seven minutes, eight minutes. So even within certain songs, like it's kind of like we go into some voyage of discovery, then we come back and, uh, and realize it's still the same song. It even happens to us when we're playing some of these songs. And I've talked to many friends of mine, people that have listened to the album already, you know, they have that kind of, uh, they point that out, that they're always discovering something new. And that's very, it makes me really proud because that's really what I wanted to do, to get as many elements as possible, like Portuguese guitar or the cello, female, female vocals, not, not singing, but just the, the, you know, the that emotion, you know, that uh, kind of feeling that brings you to light, <laughs> like some kind of ritual that would uh, wish for better things for the future. We have that on Sarkinet and then on... Uh, gods of babylon bringing all this all these arabic kind of feelings also connects very well with our portuguese past mm -hmm. and if you come to portugal we have so many uh, things that will remind you from the food to, to certain words um also you know the celtics were here we, portugal is like i think everybody's been here at a certain point yeah definitely. <laughs> from the romans to the to the to the greek so it's definitely a, a treasure this this country and it was uh, and it becomes easy if you start looking into your home and what elements you can use that is so, so not normal in the metal scene because you don't have like i said there aren't many portuguese bands and uh, i would like to change that like that was always the goal even with my ex band it was like to open doors and to have um, you know more bands follow these days times have changed there's a lot more bands out there especially with the internet and, and the way that we communicate, it's not like the tape tra trading days that I was used to putting tapes in the, in the mail, waiting two weeks to get them. Uh, but still, you know, there, there's there's a lot to be done. There's a compared to my experience of what I went through with all the albums I did and producers and touring bands. Uh, I think there's still a lot to, to be taught here, and I tried to pass all that information with uh, with my band. But I think that was like the 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 main was like put to use all my information yeah. of all these years and also the love and joy of this style of music. Do you, and where did like metal sort of come as a means? Cause you know, like I interviewed, uh, you know, I interviewed Harry who is in tier, who's from the Faroe islands and his culture very much influences their style of heavy metal music. Uh, there's no denying Sepultura is very influenced by their culture in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, like how, for you, how, what came first? Was it being influenced by, a Portuguese culture that made you want to explore music or were you like a metalhead before you decided that you wanted no. to maybe make this concept <laughs> the theme behind your bands no I, I was I, I was a complete metalhead you know growing up in America in the 80s I, I was always watching MTV and, and uh, following all the all the trends especially in the hard rock the thrash metal but when I moved to Portugal um, that's all I really knew. I didn't know much about Portuguese music or even Portuguese history. I was, uh, I got like dropped here <laughs> as a teenager. And it was, uh, for me, it was my, my parents' country. It was their heritage. And, and throughout the years, this is kind of like why I'm trying to involve all this now because I've got older and mature and I see, you know, how amazing and how lucky I am to be part of this culture. Uh, as a kid, I didn't recognize that, of course. I thought I was, uh, I just wanted to stay home. I didn't want to go to the <laughs> Portuguese parties with the, the Portuguese music that kind of freaked me out as a kid uh, listening to Van Halen, Motley Crue, Doc and Rat and all these uh, King Diamond, Iron Maiden. It's like it was definitely not an image that I wanted to be associated to. Uh, but to have the opportunity to start a new band and to figure out what are the things that uh, make us Portuguese, what are the things that connect with uh, foreigners and people that, why do they love to come to our country? What, what, what what is that that you're also missing? Like, I think as cultures, like we fill in the gaps somehow. It's, it's so cool to be able to be people from other places of the world uh, that live in different ways and we learn from that. And uh, Portugal was definitely a, a learning spot uh, many years ago. It still is today. It's become, again, popular. Like everybody's coming here, famous actors, and a whole bunch of bands, and uh, you name it. They're filming Fast and Furious in some areas of Portugal. So there's been this huge boom, especially now after the, the pandemic. And, and I can understand why. For me, uh, it always reminds me of the coast of California, uh, our country, because we have, uh, it's like all coast practically. <laughs> like you, you drive a little bit east and you're already in Spain. So yeah. it's, uh, what, it's what we treasure the, the most. And um, like I said, uh, you know, 
like places in the states you learn so much with all the cultures like new york is amazing right? it's like a, there's no other place like that in the world even in, in america and i was fortunate to have a band that i also got to travel america i got to see a lot of different states a lot of different realities and coming from I'm, i was brought up in boston but i never would have had probably that chance if i wasn't in the portuguese metal band you know not most americans have the chance to see the whole country yeah. like i did like every two years like for 20 years mm -hmm. And, and you learn so much, and I, I, and that's another thing. I also wanted to bring that part of me, that American maybe side of me, into the European music that you know I created and, and was part of for so long. You know, trying to bring uh, you know, some kind of balance. Well, when and, I and uh, definitely looking for something different. Well, when I listen to you know when I listen to this new uh, Seven Storm album and your work with Moonspell and even like going back to Decade, like it almost just seems like that it's not just like i don't just see elements of portuguese culture in it. i see so many different influences of many different cultures when i listen to an album like uh, extinct or 1755 like i do see like a lot of elements that could be taken from you know external cultures that we see but also like a lot of internal uh monologue and a lot of internal um experiences incorporated as well I is it fair to say that maybe with seven definitely Storm, with Seven Storm or any project you're involved in, does your personal life and your personal experiences, this is obviously your interpretation of these experiences, right? It, would you say, though, the music is not as yeah. a documentary, almost kind of like you would say? No, it, it's impossible to be a documentary because then you would really have to know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, when you're creating music, that's why I always t tell the band, like we, we, we get the influences, we work the structures, we work you know, the riffs. You know, we, we try to get the, you know, that... You know the boom of the song you know the so something that attracts you all, all the proper hooks then you have to leave us some space for, for for the magic that's what i always say that's when you know you just let the music go or when we went to the studio like maybe we weren't so well prepared but we kind of risked it like go into the studio let's see what happens everything sounds different it's a you, know, you have people around you you have people working the sound you know ideas flow like and i love that i love that things that can happen like that one moment you can be talking about an album for years but it was really just that one moment that you recorded it uh, some of the songs might have taken longer uh, but some show up like in minutes like saudad is a song that was one riff and i heard it and i said this is going to be our single <laughs> i don't know why but so i have to have space for that i always have to have space for for following my instinct and what i'm feeling at that precise moment and of course, my personal life is is really important, especially at this album. I think uh, there's never been an album that was so, you know, uh, part of me like this one. Uh, when I recorded Wolf Art, I was only like 18, 19 years old. And of course, uh, I, I was deeply involved in the band, but I wasn't mature. I wasn't. I was still a kid. <laughs> like you look back, you look pa uh, like back. You're like, how did how did the hell did that happen? Well, you know, how did all of a sudden? Yeah. Well, speaking of being a kid, because I wanted to bring this up, actually, because I believe I could be wrong, but last year was 30 years of maybe the first time the world has ever heard your drumming, which is uh, the dark rehearsal demo from Decade. So I kind of wanted to yeah, go back true. in time, actually, and maybe like take me back to the days of Decade, actually. And like, what was the sort of like mindset that had to have been your first band or your first recording ever? Like, it was. What, it how, was. How has the evolution changed, you know, like dozens and dozens of albums later? Well, I was only 14 years old and I had just came from the States and uh, I, I was like just hanging out with older kids that were into extreme metal. Like uh, this band, DK, the, the, the founder is called uh, Jose and he was like really into Bathory, Venom. And that's where it started for me, like the more extreme metal, like, especially black metal. And all these different genres, like bands like Root that came from Czech Republic, you know, things coming from uh, like Rotting Christ, of course, and Samael. Uh, so it was uh, just a huge movement. And that stayed with me until now, uh, till these days. And it's funny you mentioned that because uh, recently I started talking to him again. Uh, we hadn't talked for, for years, but uh, he did teach me a lot of how to rehearse and how to uh, grow up a band. And we rehearsed in, in his dad's garage uh and oh man it was very it wasn't at the level that you would think these days things were very difficult back then in portugal even to get equipment any kind of sound system so but the the uh, just the will to do it you know, was definitely there and we already started doing uh, some shows we would uh, 
invite other bands just to watch our our rehearsals and then we would like take turns being part of the audience mm -hmm. so and we did our first interviews together we had fanzines together the, the tape trading movement you know ordering stuff together like because we couldn't get shirts or cds here so we'd all get together put money in and order it from germany or from the states so all all this was like and that was that was only that one year and it's uh and I definitely did go back to those times with this new project. I really uh, feel that I had to do like a recycle and uh, figure it out where it all started for me and where, where, where what made it happen. And actually, it was through them that I did a rehearsal playing Countess Bathory from Venom that uh, got me into Moonspell when I was only 16. That and then I did the demo and blah blah blah. But we were really tight back then. We were like we were like the we were like the metal movie, I guess. Like yeah. Bands. You know, we, we, we'd go to each other's rehearsal places, you know, we'd stay in touch, we'd go see, you know, shows together. I would tech for my friend. I remember him doing a show with this band from Germany, uh, Accuracy or something, like thrash metal band. That was behind his seat, like, you could, so nobody could see me just to help him out. And, and that's where it really, uh, I think, my passion is, I guess, now I'm talking about it. It's like that moment when things happen, like, that's being on stage. Like it's a it's a war sometimes. Like th things can go really you know really wrong, <laughs> and you have to you know be experienced to make the show the best possible for the fan, yeah. and that's definitely something I've uh, grown to know how to do, or at least continue to try to do. Yeah. And um, but it did start definitely there. Yeah. And they they were always like banging on my head like play faster play faster play faster and I was I was into hard rock they're like what are you talking about is this is fast enough <laughs> oh, and then and then and then you discovered blast beats and uh, then we and then you yeah more and, with Angel and all these bands uh, we were really into death metal yep. and it, like all the extreme part of the metal like the gothic thing I think came later for me in life I listened to bands like Fields of the Nephilim to the Mercy Cure. Also influences from other members of the band that you would hang out with, or like uh, I always had these girlfriends that were older than me. They were all into the goth stuff, or the, uh, the Jesus and Mary Chain, Bauhaus, and, and all that. So music was always around me, especially in this area, which is uh, uh, exciting because you come from a small country in Portugal. But when you would go to Lisbon, everybody would would like go to the same bars. If you were punk, if you were metal. If you were goth, it didn't really matter. If you're into hardcore, everybody showed up at the same bar because it was the only place that they would play. You know extreme music yeah <laughs> and the beer is cheap probably yeah I and we all go down to a to, to another area yep. yeah i interviewed the band uh solace uh from portugal from uh libson and they were they were saying like the same thing like there's a great music scene and everything but it's all in like one place uh so like uh there is yeah, too yeah much times have changed i'm talking to, I'm, I'm thinking of like back in the 90s and now I, I don't even know where I can go listen to metal music in uh, in Lisbon because it's become so uh, it's a little trendy, <laughs> a little or a lot for me I would say, and it's perfect for tourists of course. But we're losing the, our those places that were ours, you know. But that's normal. I've seen that happen all over the world. It's like that in like, every. You city. think it's just just everywhere? Like I saw that happen by touring. Like the first time I went to, I don't know, Germany or. Romania, <laughs> and things changed over ten years, twenty years. You know, places where they didn't have many shows. You now they're super organized, like Mexico. First time I went to play in Mexico, man, I don't even know how we got out of there alive the first couple of times. You know, not that we weren't, we didn't feel safe, but it was like it was uh, having the the proper equipment and and know how to do the shows. But now you go there, it's like amazing. Yeah, They're the most professional, best shows you can imagine. And I'm really, and I have a lot of friends there with production companies and agencies. They do an amazing job. And they all started similar to so many stories, just a bunch of friends that went to high school together. And, you know, wanted to go see, uh, I have some friends that told me stories of going to see Doors. These are older guys. They went to go see Doors and cross the border to go to LA to see uh, like Black Sabbath and all those bands. So uh, I'm fortunate to, to listen to all this history because it's what it pumps me to continue to do music. Definitely. And I have two more questions for you, but um, do you feel that maybe with all the projects you've been involved with, Decayed, Moon, Spell, and now Seventh Storm, you're almost portraying, like, a different side of, like, is it almost like, or is it, it's obviously a direct extension of who you are, but is it maybe a different portrayal of who you are in a way, or are there similar means of expression with all the projects you've been involved in? Well, the similarity it definitely is like always playing with the other Portuguese musicians. <laughs> That's, I think, what would be 
because I, I learned that like many years ago going to, to to do albums in Finland we had a producer where he was seeing our guitar player playing and he just said like a Finnish player would never play it like that because you know metal from North everything's more strict and you know uh, tight like completely tight which is metal of course but the Portuguese because of our Fado influence and the, the Portuguese guitar players from our fast everything is a, a lot more laid back there's a lot more space like the flamenco from Spain you know there's a there's a love that you put into it there's a passion there's a feeling it has like your own kind of uh, of heartbeat you actually you shouldn't even put a click to it we did some shows with one of the most famous guitar uh, players Portuguese guitar players from Portugal uh, Antonio Cheinho and we tried to uh, I would play with a click track and I felt so bad because he plays on his own time you can't put a click to these <laughs> people from the from the from the old days and uh, uh, I think that kind of what we put into the music, I think that's the similar thing you know, because it has to do with our upbringing. It has to do for that fight that I'm always talking about that was so hard to, to have metal shows, to have records, to even today to, to have a band, to have proper conditions, to record your music. And not just the proper conditions, but also the proper mentality. And we all fought through that. Like the producers, they would do like, you know, normal portuguese traditional traditional music or whatever that's on the soap operas i don't know so they were always like what is this this is noise what are you guys recording here <laughs> Fair enough. Remember one of our first shows they they said that they couldn't do uh, the sound that well because of the kind of music that it was so they're like okay man. <laughs> we'll cancel this one and uh, definitely definitely and then the final question i actually wanted to ask you is kind of like about your uh, approach to drumming actually because it's the most important instrument, regardless if you're playing grindcore or you're playing smooth jazz. Drums are your drummer sucks, your band sucks. It's the most important uh, principle. Yeah. For you, have you always needed music before you laid down your rhythm and laid down your parts, or for your uh, approach to drumming, um, you sometimes have a whole pattern written down and the band could write over that? Yeah, with so many albums, uh, I went through so many different experiences. And there was a time where I would practice a lot, like these rhythms, and I'd just bring it to the rehearsal room. And then someone would put just a riff on top of it, and we constructed so many songs that you would know today that were done like that. Uh, sometimes it was the other way around. So there was a riff, or there was an idea, and the guys would show me like a drum beat, and I tried to interpret that drum beat. Uh, for me, it's always... Uh, what comes out best for me is always my first instinct, usually. When I start to think too much about the drum pattern, then I'm not thinking too much about the music. And definitely with this album, I, I proved that to myself, where my main focus was everything but the drums. <laughs> <laughs> main focus was vocals, guitars, bass, the overall sound, you know, down to the mixing, you know, even the way we recorded it, the, the, the way we structured it all out, the, the whole process. That was kind of like my obsession with, the, with this album. And I was even worried going into the studio. I was telling the band the last couple of days, I didn't even think about the drums that much. I hope they're cool. Because <laughs> nobody tells me anything in this <laughs> band, which is also a novelty. Sometimes I have to ask them, but do you like this that I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And once in a while, I would ask for some suggestions and they'd give them to me. But most of them, there, there wasn't. I just went straight through uh, the songs, like playing them, uh, trying to keep them as, as interesting as possible, but also trying to give... Um, a more organic feeling. It's so difficult to put organic drums in metal these days, I think, because of uh, it's just the, what we're accustomed to, I guess. Like if you listen to a Morbid Angel album from the 80s and listen to like an extreme death metal band these days, it's going to sound very different. Yeah, 100%. Because uh, we also rec we recorded on tape. You know, you can like, you know, just cut in like you do these days and also what you can do with, uh, with Pro Tools and all that. So uh, with this album, that was a little bit of a fight in the beginning, especially with some producers I was talking about. They really want to try to do the production uh, as organic as possible, rehearse as much as possible with the band, and try to capture that essence, that you know, that power. Like if you're playing on stage in the studio, of course, then you have to compromise in so many other details. But that was my fight until the end. Try it to, so the music would breathe, so there'd be space. And uh, I'm definitely from a time maybe that's my hard rock roots. Like for a riff to really sound the best sometimes, not all the times, of course, but also like the, the extreme stuff, but uh, it has to breathe, it has to, there has to be space. If there's a thousand things going on from everywhere, sometimes it's not gonna have that punch, it's not gonna have that power, it's not gonna connect to you. 
And that's what was always my focus on everything that we did. Didn't really care if it was, you know, amazing or not. You know, did, did it have impact? Yes. Okay, check. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and um, and you could be honest too. When when music is presented to you without the drums and you have to write over that, I'd imagine it's pretty off time sometimes, right? Yeah, I don't usually get into that. I I really like to construct my songs from from the beginning. And I, I've always been the band guy. I've never had like projects on the side or, or just ask you know, people to send me stuff. The only thing I do is uh, with this new, uh, new guitar player, they'll send me some riffs. And at home with my pad, like I'll play on top of it. But then I really have to get to the studio, put on a clip, you know, find out the proper time, proper feel. So I have all this process. But this is years of doing this. It's kind of like the, the metal Bible yeah. that you construct throughout throughout the years of how the... How the because that's the way I think. I can't think of just playing something. It's like if I'm gonna rec- if I'm gonna play, it's because I'm gonna record it. If I'm gonna record it, I'm gonna play it live. That's the way I've always been. Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, no, 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 <laughs> well, they they say like don't you know like if you're gonna play something on an album, make sure you could reproduce it live. Um, even though playing live and recording is such a completely separate entity, but I figured you know like it is. It is. It is. You, you, it is. You, you capture a moment in the recording, and I hear that with this album. And I think when people go see you, they want to relive that moment uh, that's captured yeah. on the album. So I guess you have to kind of, uh, you have to try to reproduce it as much as possible, right? And that's always been the most important. Like I really missed rehearsing regularly. You know, these days, the bands I don't think rehearse that much uh, together. Like they, they, each one's at their own home. They're sending files to each other. But even when we were composing, like. And if we did even send files, we would still have to get together to try it out, to, to see how it felt. So I think when the process comes to playing live, it'll be so much simpler because that's what you've been doing throughout, throughout the whole time. And not just being at home, you know, figuring things out in your head and not actually trying them out until the studio. And, and then it's also all those months and years that you, you weren't practicing it like every week. You know, and we've been practicing this album like since uh, since January, you know, as the as the the way it sounds, not the way it sounds on the album, because that would be boring anyways. So it's also what I tell people: if you really want to listen just to the album, you just put buy some big speakers, because <laughs> <laughs> the because the live performance is a live performance, you know, and anything can happen. And I think that's the thrill of it. Like you can, I, I've had you know moments where people have told me like it sounds so much bigger than the album, or sometimes the other way around. Oh, it didn't sound as great as the album. You know, the show is a show. I did a couple of thousands of them. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't make every one of so, them better. <laughs> but but I think I did I did a couple of good ones, and uh, I hope with this band we still have like I think it's gonna be exciting to get on stage with them. We we just booked our first show here in, in Portugal in Lisbon, so it's all it's all a new start, and it's the uh, you know it, it's definitely the journey the the adventure that makes it exciting. Just like uh, rock and roll on on the road. Like it's one hour you play live, an hour and a half. If you're support in 45 minutes, I've done tours like that in the States. And it's so much time you have <laughs> in, on yourself to, to do something. And uh, But those long travels, you know, it makes, it makes up for it, you know, especially with it when you're with your buddies. Definitely. And uh, thank you so much for uh, such a great conversation, for such a great uh, interview to discuss this brand new Seven Storm album. Uh, before we go, I do want to thank you so much for your time today. Is there just anything else? You mentioned that you have the debut performance in Lisbon. Is there a chance you could bring Seven Storm to the States one day? Oh, I hope so. I mean, that's the that's definitely the goal. And I, I want to start in Portugal because it's definitely easier. And it's a new band. Uh, I try to do some shows in, in Europe. And uh, hopefully go into the normal process of doing tours. Uh, the states can be more difficult, especially for European bands, because we're just starting out. Uh, it, it gets hard, um, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. I wouldn't have done an album if I didn't think so. Yeah. And it, it, is, it is also my home. I have so much family in America. It was one of the, the biggest thrills and made me so proud to have my family come out to see me play uh, when I would tour the states. And all the other friends, like I've made friends from you know, East, to, to west, north, to south, all over America. Uh, so much support throughout the years. And uh, I got used to seeing the same faces every other year. So so it's a, a big part of me is still there. So I definitely have to bring this band mm-hmm. and uh, reconnect. Yeah, well, we would love to have you here. Thank you so much, Mike. Everybody, we are here with Mike of Seven Storm. Be sure to check out Maledict this coming out August 12th. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.